Welcome to episode 26 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth. Today we learn how a boast by Hrathnir to Odin that he has the fastest horse leads to a challenge for Thor in Thor's Duel with Hrathnir. Odin, god of gods, was not content with being able to see everything that happened in the Nine Worlds. He was not content even with being able to understand all that he saw. His blood raced, and he longed to test life's winds and tides for himself. While Thor was away fighting trolls and troll women and their wolf children in iron wood, Odin bridled his own lack of action. He became so restless that he donned his golden helmet and leaped onto Sleipnir, hungry for some happening. Sleipnir vaulted the torrent thud beside Valhalla and then the old river that snaked through a canyon. He spring-heeled over the broad, gleaming river and the river teeming with spears, and his eight hooves clattered as he galloped over Scree. For hour after hour, Odin rode towards Jotaheim, across utterly dreary country, at first flat and tisaki, and pocked with small, deserted lakes, then flat and stony. A sea of slabs where nothing lived and nothing grew. At last, where the land began to swell and in some places to smoke, leavened by fires far below the earth crust, Odin came to the hall of Rachnir, strongest of all giants. Who are you? demanded Rachnir. The raider pulled his blue cloak close about him, tilted his wide-brimmed hat forward, and said nothing. I've been watching you. I saw you coming, your gold helmet flashing under the sun. You seem to be riding as much through the air as on the ground, Hragnir rubbed his enormous nose. That's an uncommonly fine horse you've got there. Better than any in Jotaheim, retorted Odin. That's for sure. That's what you think, replied the giant. That's what I know, said Odin. What do you know of Jotaheim, little man? said Ragnir. Is terrorizing. Don't be so certain. I'm certain enough to wager my head on it. You fool, bellowed Ragnir. Have you never heard of Gold Mane? Who? said Odin. My horse, shouted Ragnir. Gold mane, fast as your horse may be, gold mane will gallop him into the ground. <laughs> Spat Odin, all gap. Gold mane, boomed Ragnir, and his voice bounced back off the mountain wall. My head, Ragnir, called Odin, spurring Slapnir into a gallop. Come on and collect it. By the time Ragnir had sprung onto Gold Mane, the helmeted one was already on the other side of the smoking hill. The god and the giant raced across the flatlands, and neither gained ground on the other. They raced into the uplands, and Ragnir had no thought for anything but the chase. They crossed the nineteen rivers, and before the thick-headed giant had taken stock of where he was, he found himself inside the walls of Asgard. Then at last he realized who his visitor had been. Odin was waiting for Hrothnir beside Valgrind, the outer gate of Valhalla. That's an uncommonly fine horse you've got there, he said. Hrothnir glared at Odin, angry but unable now to do anything about it. You must be thirsty after such an exertion, Odin said. Let Goldmane drink from this torrent fund, and you, Hrognir, come and drink in Valhalla. Odin led the way in under the roof of shields and spears, and his wolves, Freki and Jerry, all once got up and loped towards him. Ranks of warriors filled the benches, feasting and drinking after the day's slaughter, and when they saw the giant, they began to shout it. 
It was an awesome noise, as if the sea itself was cut in the mighty hall and waves were breaking on a strand of stone. The father of battle raised one hand, and as the clamor began to die down, he called out, Ragnir comes unarmed. He comes in peace. Let him drink and leave in peace. How can I drink? said Hragnir, without a horn in my hands. Then the Valkyries axed time, and raging brought out the two massive horns from which Thor was used to drink. Both were brimming with ale. Drink, said Odin, test your thirst against our finest trenchermen. All the company in Valhalla watched as Hragnir tossed off one horn without taking a breath, and then did the same with the other. Such a tide of ale that even Thor might have had trouble with it. It was not long before the giant began to feel the effects. I will, he shouted suddenly. Odin looked at Hragnir, and his one eye glittered. Surely not, he murmured. I will, the giant shouted again, and he waved his arms and, thrusting his head forward, glared at Odin. I'll pick up this piffling hall and carry it home to you to hame. The warriors sitting in the bench roared with laughter. Ragnir swung round to face them. He meant to take steps towards them, but his balance was wrong, and he reeled sideways. I'm going to shrink Ashgard in the she, he bellowed. Olden folded his arms. His mask-like face hid his thoughts. After a while, he asked rather casually, Then what is to become of us? You, said Kragnir, I'm going to kill you, you gods and warriors. Smash you! The giant brought his fist down on a trestle table. Its end leaped up, and the table danced and fell flat on its face. There was not so much noise in the hall then. Everyone was watching Hragnir. All except you two, said the giant, pointing at Freya and Sif, fairest of the goddesses. I'll take you back with me. I can find a use for you. Odin nodded, and Freya sidled forward as she moved all the jewels she was wearing flashed and glimmered, and Ragnir tried to rub the stars out of his eyes. Drink again, said Freya. She poured a lot more ale into one of the horns. Is this all the ale in this house? demanded the giant. I'll drink every drop of ale in Ashgard. But although the giant drank more and more, he did not fall into a stupor as Freya had planned. He simply assaulted the company with a stream of boasts. The gods and warriors soon became tired of them, and Odin sent a messenger to find Thor in Ironwood and ask him to return to Asgard at once. It was not long before Thor burst into the hall, swinging his hammer. What's this? he shouted. What's next? No one had seen him more angry, even when Loki had cut off Sif's hair. What next, when sly devils of giants can hope to drink in Valhalla? Krugner looked at Thor wearily and hiccuped. Who says you can drink here? demanded Thor. And why is Freya waiting on you? Is this a feast in honor of the giants? The giant waved an arm in the direction of Odin. His chief conjured, he burbled. Odin, he invited me in. Easier to get in than out, said Thor, tightening his hold on his hammer and raising it again. If you kill me unarmed, said the giant, it won't add much to your fame except for foul play. Drunk as he was, he well understood he still had to escape from Valhalla unscathed, and he knew, too, what would touch Thor most closely. It would be a better test, he began, a much better test of your bravery. What? said Thor. 
if you dared fight me. Dared, repeated Thor between his teeth. I challenge you to meet me, said Hrungnir, on the borders of Jotaheim and Ashgard. We'll fight at Griot and Algirdar, the stone fence house. Thor looked at the giant and saw that he was in earnest. What a fool I am! I have left my hone and shield at home, said Hrungnir. If I had my weapons, we could settle the matter here and now. But if you mean to kill me unarmed, you're a coward! No one had dared challenge Thor to a duel before, and the Thunder God was eager to accept. You can count on it, he told the giant. I do not break faith. Do not break faith with me. Then Kragnar barged out of Valhalla without a backward look. He heaved himself onto the gold mane's back and galloped away to Jotaheim as fast as he could. When the giants heard about Hrugnir's journey to Valhalla and his forthcoming duel with Thor, they thought he had won great honor. And they said, You have won the first part of a famous victory. But for all of that, the giants were uneasy and anxious. They knew that if Hrugnir lost the duel and was killed, that would be a bad hour for Jotaheim. If you do not win, they said, what can we expect? You're the strongest of us all. And here is where I end my tale for today. And I'll be back with more tales, many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.